Hey guys, Mike Bosman's here. Say, so I just want to do a little piggyback off of uh, what Randy Duncan posted, I think it was last week. Um, him and I both did our first backpacking uh, adventures last year in, I think he was Montana, I was Colorado. He went solo, but I went with a group of guys. Um, but I had about nine months to get myself ready for it and did pretty well uh, as far as lightweight, uh, sticking to a cheap budget. Um, I can't afford to go out and buy top dollar everything, just like Randy. Um, so I just want to go through some of my stuff, where I got it from, um, why I chose what I chose, some of the stuff that I've ditched from last year and what I've gone to for this year. So we'll just kind of start. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is when it comes to weight, you can spend a lot of money trying to shave weight off your equipment. Um, you know, the, the adage of $100 a pound is pretty close. Um, but when you start really looking at your gear, the cheapest way to save weight is when you start multi-purposing something. Instead of uh, having an item that only performs one task, you can get it to do multiple things and do them fairly well. Uh, that's your cheapest way of saving that money. Um, next thing is compact. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, take, take recommendations from experienced hunters and they go out and buy a 4,200 lead or 4,200 cubic inch pack, and then they start packing all their budget gear into it, and they realize they don't have room for it. Uh, they kind of look like Jed Clamp that going up the mountain with everything strapped to them, and nothing's balanced, makes it more uncomfortable. Uh, so we'll focus on stuff that's compact. Um, price last year was a big deal for me. Um, if my wife only knew how much I spent she'd be proud uh, she doesn't know that there's $900 backpacks out there uh, she still thinks I spent too much but that's the way it goes um, and when it comes to making those purchases uh, it's a little late in the season to, to really take advantage of all the options out there but there are sources out there to get just about anything either a, a budget brand something that's designed for backpacking um, you know there's always options to that high-end gear that that everybody recommends and I'm sure a lot of it has a there's a great reason why a guy will pay $200 for a rain jacket um, but you're starting out from scratch it's pretty easy to spend $5,000 on gear and still not feel like you have the best of everything it's more important to just have what you know is going to work for you it's going to make for an enjoyable experience and uh, that's kind of the gist um, when I talk about where to buy stuff, um, there are so many different places, thrift stores, garage sales, obviously, Facebook Marketplace, you'd be amazed at the stuff that's on there. There's all kinds of Facebook groups. Uh, one of them is backpacking, hiking gear deals. I found some cottage vendors on that site, um, found some amazing products for cheap. Um, another one is backpacking gear flea market on Facebook. Um, of course, a lot of people know about Camo Fire and Black Ovis websites. Um, garage Grown Gear, they've got some ultralight backpacking stuff. And backpackers are about as cheap as cheap gets sometimes. So there's a lot of really good options out there that aren't geared and marketed for the hunting industry, but they just work and they're lightweight, fit the bill on most everything. So uh, we'll start off right off the bat. I'll try to give you some maybe some weights, I'm not so much worried about that, but just why I chose it, where I got it from. So start off right away, trekking poles. I'm 40 years old, I never thought I'd need trekking poles. When I got them last year because of a, a tent that I bought and started hiking around with them, they are a godsend for going downhill. Worth every ounce, I don't care if you get ones that are made out of rebar, they're worth it. Um, these little guys are only 10 ounces each. They're aluminum River Country pro products for something like this. Um, kind of show you a few things as I go through this. You know, a lot of times enjoyable hunt comes down to working with your gear and knowing how to how to use it. Um, you know, just the little things of a carabiner for trekking poles that snaps up onto your load lifter. Yeah, it's in your way now and, and you try walking around and it's a pain. You flip around behind you and I decided that, you know what, this gets me by. Okay, they're not making noise. I can draw and shoot a bow. I can shoot a rifle. May not work if I got a rifle slung there, but so goes it. Um, 
just going through everything here. Um, cheap, lightweight, one liter soda bottle. Um, comes with fitting cap and works great with my filtration system that we'll get into later. Um, Molly eBay bottle holder. It's a perfect size. I never have any fall out. It's not this clip up here. It's not swinging around. Again, it works for me. Um, Sidearm for me, I'm not in grizzly country, so I'm carrying a lighter weight 9mm, 365. Um, don't need a whole lot of ammo, but I have 10, 10 rounds. It's a lot more than a lot of revolver guys have got. Holster, believe it or not, this is a probably a dollar store or a garage sale Crossman air pistol holster. Works great, holds every pistol I own securely. Got a spot to hold a magazine. I'm only taking one this year. Um, straps right to the belt. Um, bow holders. Can't remember the name of these. Maybe I'll, when I can read it, um, I'll give you the name on it. But you can never run out of ways to hold your bow or get it out of your hands while you're on the mountain. If you want to be using trekking poles, need two hands. This works nice. I actually bought two of them. I kind of center my D-loop in between them so I'm not pulling on that and moving it. The other thing I do is a just a lightweight sling. I know there's a guy on one of the sites making a, an awesome looking sling. I just haven't found need for something that advanced yet. Um, there's also another guy making a uh, Franken stud sling keeper, kind of a stud you put up on your shoulder. If you got a backpack with load lifters, it's constantly sliding off. There's another little plastic clip. I forget who makes it out there, but you get that up there, it's basically hands-free walking. Um, the stupid little things that you don't realize. This bow, everybody looks at and goes, your, your arrows are on upside down. Well, that's true. Just about every other quiver flips in the opposite direction. But when it's hanging this way, I'd rather walk through the brush with the broadhead guard forward instead of snagging and pulling arrows on every bit of brush. Same thing when it's this direction. Okay, just a little modification. It's time spent with my gear, and that's what leads to it. Um, nothing fancy about the bow. <clears throat> I prefer that holster down here. A lot of guys like the chest rigs, each their own. I don't want to buy no harness, a sternum strap, and a chest rig all popped up here. I just want it down there. I know where it's at, ready to go when I need it. Little things. bugle tube you don't need a $50 bugle tube it's a dollar store baseball bat cut taped yeah I could tape it better it does the job I can tell this is gonna end up being a long video right now <laughs> um, Kuyu 7800 icon pro or 7200 um, I'm sure there's better packs out there. I can't afford them, so I'm not interested in them. Um, this one was picked up on Rock Slide online forum. Cost me $300 brand new with the tags. Um, I know it's almost a $600 pack. Works great for me. Fairly lightweight. Um, enough said. Um, little things. They seem so so simple now, but. You're out and it's pouring rain. Um, you need places to put a backpack that isn't so stupid crazy light that's half an ounce. Keep your bag pack off the ground. Okay, that's all it takes. You know, you got food in there, you don't want mice getting into it at night, something like that. Again, playing with your gear all leads to these little things that make that hunt more enjoyable. I'm missing all of my S beaners. I have no idea where they are, so I'm fighting with regular carabiners on most of this stuff. Um, I know there's some high dollar expensive bino harnesses out there. This one was $65 from Gear Rack. Comes with a rangefinder pouch. Spot for your wind indicator, calls on the side, bino inside, 
has the tether if you want to clip your binos to it. More storage inside. For me, that's anti-fog wipes. Some lens cleaner. And then on the back, what I consider a couple essential things. More extra calls. If something would ever happen to that sight on that bow, I have just the Allen wrenches I needed. And if, if my bow's tuned, a couple of field points I can throw in on those arrows and shoot rotten stumps to get sighted back in, in a pinch. And when it comes to, to major catastrophes, you can only plan and bring so much with you. Um, it's nicer to have stuff at the truck, no matter how far away that is, than have it sitting at home. Um, so just some of the things I keep in the truck, even though that's eight, nine miles away, spare bow, string, and cable. You can always find an archery shop with a press. They don't always stock your string and cable. As I replace an old one, I keep the old one. It's mostly set up, a little bit of tuning, I'm back in the game. Um, I, I tinker with my bows quite a bit. So I actually have a portable bow press. It's not the most speedy option out there, but in a pinch and miles from nowhere, middle of the night, this sitting in the truck can be a lifesaver. I won't pull everything out, but a couple different brackets depending on the limb design that you have on your bow. It's a Bowmaster press. Other things in the truck, sewing kit. You rip a strap on a pack and zip ties that you carried with you don't do it. That can help you out. Um, extra boots. Um, not everybody packs a spare pair of boots up the mountain with them, but it sure helps. As I'll talk about later, it got me out of a big bind last year. Um, the very first time I went to Colorado, 20 years ago, nice new set of Rockies, made it through the first day. Slipped on some shale slides, sliced the boot wide open three and a half hour drive to go get a pair of overpriced boots to salvage the rest of my hunt. <coughs> um, maybe more advanced tools for your weapon, whether it's a bow or your rifle, sitting back in the truck. Um, it's kind of it for the truck stuff. Got some other things to talk about. Um, Right off the bat, when I head up the hill, um, I try to keep it light, basic. Um, find yourself a belt that the buckle does not pinch or bind up when underneath that backpacking strap. Um, for me, what works well is I actually take some of my heavier clothing that I do carry a spare set of, and I'll wear that up the hill. Uh, the weight just rides better hanging on your body than hanging off your back. So for me, it's a like 1500 weight uh, merino long sleeve shirt, merino boxers, and my favorite budget item. Um, these are both black Ovis, by the way. They're relatively cheap. Cabe uh, Wrangler Outdoor Flex Pants. Everybody puts them right up there with the Eddie Bauer Guide Series. Um, they work. They're lightweight. They're durable. I do everything in them. I don't hardly wear my jeans anymore. The thing I like best is I'm a belt guy, but they stay in place without a belt, but they got some flex to them. Um, they're just really nice pants. They dry fast, uh, they work phenomenal. <coughs> For me, Boots is Solomon GTXs. Uh, last year, kind of drank the Kool-Aid and everybody said, you gotta get something like a Crispy or a Kenetrek, you know, a dedicated mountain boot. I went for it. Bought a pair of Crispy Thors, trained in them all summer. They felt amazing. I hike at 600 feet here in uh, Wisconsin. We've got one hill within 60 miles. It's only 700 feet elevation. Trained all summer. I thought I was good to go. Got out to Colorado. By day two, I could barely walk. Um, there's no training for a mountain for a flatlander. There just isn't. Um, footwear is one of those things that Every person is different. For me, that stiff sole of the Krispies just didn't cut it. I was so happy when my buddy shot a bull on day four. It meant we could go back to the truck. I could grab my other boots. Within two hours of putting these back on, 
it was like I was walking on water. It was night and day difference. Um, one of the probably most important parts to this whole adventure is right here. Lists and a scale at home. You can't judge how much things weigh without putting them on a scale and then deciding is the weight worth it? Is there a cheaper alternative or a lighter alternative that I can afford uh, or what the deal is? When it comes to those, those things of, of shaving weight, um, you know, it, it's tough your first time out in the mountains to know what you really need. I know Randy did a great video last year after his trip of going through his bag and taking and going, yep, thought I was gonna need this, gone, okay? You really don't need as much as what you think you do. Um, I really encountered that, uh, a lot of excess crap, worried about being cold, um, things like that. I'll get into some more of that as I go through my pack. Um, There's a lot of things that you think you need. There's great options out there. You buy them and then you go, what was I thinking? I don't need a regular stuffed pillow. Sure, it's small, kind of compresses down. It's like 14 ounces, okay? If I'm gonna go this route, I can stuff whatever I need to in here, clothing, throw it under my head. That'd work just fine make some climate inflatable pillows. They're like 30 bucks a pop, I think, four or five ounces. They do the job, obviously <laughs> nice and small. Um, for me, they just weren't really comfortable. I kind of sleep like my wife. Um, I like five pillows in bed. I like to be comfortable. I'm not lugging five pillows up the mountain until I came across these on that Garage Gear uh, website or Garage Grown website called a flex pillow uh, weighs 0.9 ounces you inflate it with a straw yeah it's a little bit crinkly but I put two of these underneath my head or underneath my pad to kind of tip my pad up one underneath my head one underneath the back of my legs it's like I'm sleeping in a recliner at home it cost me 3.6 ounces I'll pay that price for a good night of sleep another little trick you wouldn't know this until you actually try and use your gear you sleep on this, this pillow squirts and moves all over the place. Came across a, a trick on one of the backpacking forums. Put lines of silicone, 100% silicone sealant on it. This slides pretty easy. Put that on there. It drips. It ain't going anywhere in the middle of the night. Uh, these things are incredibly tough. I probably got 60 nights on this thing. My kids sleep on them. The dog puts her toenails on them. They just work. There's always an option out there to shave weight and doesn't cost any money. Window film, poly acro, however they pronounce it, probably the best footprint out there for your tent. You can use the factory footprints and pay 70 bucks. They weigh five, six ounces. You can use Tyvek, it's even lighter, crinkly, but it folds up, eh, okay. Tyvek is, not, is waterproof, but it's designed to pass water vapor. You guys that have condensation in your tents, yeah, we expel plenty of moisture when we sleep out of our breath, but a lot of it is just the ground evaporating that moisture up inside your tent. You put a fully waterproof, vapor-proof piece of plastic underneath everything, you're gonna cut that condensation down huge. The stuff is incredibly lightweight. Um, I'll show you some later. And it's got many purposes. It's To me, last year I used it Buddy shot a bowl. I had a five by eight sheet. It weighs ridiculous, like an ounce and a half. Lay that out. As we quartered out his elk, that's where we laid the meat. Okay, we kept the, some of this polyacro in our kill kit. Um, don't skimp on the luxury items. Um, if you're hunting, especially above tree line, and there's no place to sit, there's nothing better than taking a seat at the end of the day even if it costs you some weight. Um, I gave up on it, but we know the area we're hunting now a little better. I know I've got stumps and logs and, and places to sit. There's great backpacking chairs. I mean, that's pretty friggin' small for a comfy chair. This one weighs two pounds, it was 35 bucks. You can buy one that's just under a pound, but it's gonna cost you like 150. Um, stuff that you drag up the hill that you don't need. 
I don't know what I thought I was going to use Purell for. I've got laundry soap. I've got shampoo. I've got washcloths. I've got butt cream. I've got a inflatable sink. I don't want to do dishes up there. This year, we're not sharing food. We're not sharing bowls, anything like that. I've got a spoon that I have to wash. I'm eating the mountain house right out of the packet. I'm boiling water in a, a jet boil. All of this crap can go. I don't want to do this dishes. I'm tired at the end of the day. Um, kind of going to bounce around here a little bit before I get into the pack. There's cheap options to everything. This year, I'm going to run a $160 Sudmo jet boil, or Sumo jet boil. Only reason is I saw how efficient it was last year that my buddy brought one compared to the one I had. Last year I went up the hill. This is a great option. I'd still consider doing it, but we can combine cook kits and everybody eat out of the jet boil, then I don't have to deal with this. Uh, itty bitty little stove, screws onto those propane canisters. It weighs two ounces, okay? It's $15 on eBay, e -tech, or uh, Amazon, E-Tech City. It'll get you by. I just didn't want to wait for the water to boil. Um, cook pots, you can spend a hundred bucks on a titanium whatever. This is seven dollars at Walmart. Aluminum grease pot. It cooks, it boils water just fine. Um, no, I don't bring a full bottle of Crown up the hill with me. Sack. A lot of times I'm just using it to keep the rattle and things like that down. Here's where multi-purpose comes in. You take this, if you've got really dirty, nasty water and you're using something like a Sawyer Squeeze and you're afraid of plugging it up, pour your water through something like this first. Get, you know, this is gonna filter it pretty quick. Get out a lot of the sediment, leaves, needles, debris, stuff like that. It serves a dual purpose. Those things are the things I like. Um, you're gonna see I have this little like fetish with this stuff. It's called Nylaflum. Uh, it's a, I don't even know what it's actually used for, but it is a very tough plastic. It's real thin, it's real light, it's noisy like a potato chip bag, but I use these for so many things. Obviously the first thing is keeping stuff dry. Um, the two things I don't want ever to get wet in my bag is my down puffy clothes and my down sleeping bag. So those go up the hill if it's pouring out, they're inside of a dry bag, compression sack type system. And I will put whatever gear I can inside my pack is gonna go into these Nyla flume. I mean, that's a pretty good sized bag. Um, this is another garage grown gear item. They're a little pricey. They're like two, three dollars for a bag, um, but they last forever. I've, I've been using these for several years. I've yet to punch a hole in any one of them and they hold a lot. Um, I've got a puffy jacket in here, military surplus rain pants, a Gore-Tex jacket, a pair of puffy pants, a 30 degree down sleeping bag. I'm just showing you the size of it, a 40 degree down sleeping bag. This is a zero degree synthetic bag. So you get an idea of how much stuff these things hold and they're tough. They just don't give up and break. Um, we're actually going to multi-purpose that for some other stuff this year. Again, the bounce around. Here's a cheap option for you guys just getting started. Um, military M65 liner pants. They are almost as warm as my down puffy pants. Not, not quite, but if you're just unsure of the weather, great option. eBay. $2.50 with free shipping. Always order the size long. They don't, you know, you can see how short that actually is. But it's $2.50. That's not a $250 Kuyu super down pant. It doesn't weigh the same either, but it'll get you by. Got me by fine last year. Gore-Tex jacket. Um, this one I found I think on eBay, it's a Gore-Tex pack light made by Beretta or branded by Beretta. Fairly lightweight, not super packable. Um, believe it or not, this year that one got the ax. Military surplus, um, I think this is Air Force Tiger pattern. 
great pants, totally waterproof. Yeah, you can debate the breathability of Gore-Tex if you want. Um, they don't pack up nice at all. They're stiff. Yeah, they're a little bit noisy. When it comes to the Gore-Tex gear, if, if right before I go up the hill, if that weather forecast doesn't say multiple days of rain, then I'm going with a lightweight packable rain gear. Now, if I know it's gonna rain all week and that's my vacation, that's the only time I've got, I'll probably take the weight penalty, bring the Gore-Tex, something that I can hunt and bust through brush with, but otherwise I'm going ultra light. Um, down puffer jackets. This is about the cheapest one I know of. Jerry brand on eBay, it's $35. Um, plenty warm. Last year we went up the hill. It was 15 degrees for a low on like two or three of the nights. It keeps you warm around camp. Um, none of the down gear is from busting through brush. Be a, you know, you gotta be a little careful with it, but it's not like this stuff just falls apart on you. It's $35. Um, I'm sure those $300 jackets are nice. They're not that nice to me. Uh, we'll do food in a little bit. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, darn tough merino wool socks. I have horribly sweaty feet. I didn't end up with whatever you want to call it, trench foot on the whole trip, but I do pack an extra pair and I try to wash them every other day, let them hang and dry and swap those out. You already saw the bull. Backpack. Um, on the outside, gear ties. They're a steel wire coated in rubber. You can attach just about anything anywhere to your pack. My big kick for doing these is I sweat a lot. Let's just say these are long johns. If I do the little mountain stream wash job on my long johns, I want to be able to take and for the rest of the day hike and just let them dry while they're hanging on my pack and I'm not worried about them coming off. Um, that's my biggest reason for these gear ties. I also put something on here on the pack. Small, lightweight. It's a little piece of elastic bungee cord. And I don't know what they call these things. Whatever they're called. Stretch them out. You can throw anything you want to on here for clothing. Cinch it down let it hang and let it dry while you're hunting. To me, that's a big thing. I know you can't beat an elk's nose, but I don't want to smell myself after a few days. I'll take a shower, wash some clothes quick and move on from there. Okay, so this is what a lot of guys wanted to see on that video of just what's in my gear bag. Or what's in my bag for gear, let's say it that way. All right, for me, RAV4 power supply. Be a, I still have to do a little testing on this, uh, but last year, iPhone 7, 10 days in the mountains, every day I'd be down about 20% on my iPhone, full charge, back up to full power every single day. I still had 25% battery life left on this. This year, I've got an iPhone 11. I know it's got a bigger battery, and I know it sucks the battery faster. If I need more battery capacity after testing it, I'm just gonna buy another one of those. Then I know I have power, I'm not screwing around with a fragile, maybe not waterproof solar panel, playing the sunshine game. I'm just gonna bring another pack. Um, power cord for it. If you guys don't already know it, lithium batteries, less sensitive to temperature fluctuations. And believe it or not, they are half the weight of rechargeable AA batteries. Everything in my pack runs AA batteries. Um, my headlamp, Phoenix, weighs like two ounces. Um, I do carry one flashlight as a backup. It's heavier than I need, but it's got such a nice beam to it. I'm not scared of the dark, but I'd like to know what those eyeballs are before they're right on top of me. Um, so basically, if I don't need to use this much, here's two spare batteries that come up the mountain with me. Spares for my headlight.
So this pack is not packed the way that I would normally pack it. Um, this is just to do this video. I very much dislike stuff sacks. If you look inside here, I hate how everything is. Yes, it's nice and organized, but I hate how it just bulks up. The only thing that goes in stuff sacks for me is the down stuff. The sleeping bag and my puffy set. Those things that kind of get out of control if they're not contained. Um, I actually weighed it out last year. If I put everything in stuff sacks versus removing it, I weighed all these stuff sacks. I had 1.2 pounds of stuff sacks and compression sacks. I got rid of all that crap. Um, again, I said down goes in dry bags. Cheap Walmart ultralight down uh, dry bags. They keep, they work it. They just do. If you don't believe me, take one of them, fill it up with water and hang it. They hold water forever. Um, so, budget-minded guy, weight-minded guy. These are True Timber down pants. They have a three-quarter length zipper on it. Plenty to get on and off of your boots with your boots on. Um, Optics Planet. I think I bought these for $69 on sale. Jacket. Oh, if you haven't noticed, I don't care about camouflage patterns. There's so many guys that hunt plain, plain solid clothing. I don't care if I'm mismatched. Down jacket that I've settled on for this year. Eddie Bauer. I think this is the Sirius Light. Um, 650 fill power down in it. I know that right now they are on clearance for $70. And if you look at the top of their website, there's another code for 60% off of that price. That brings us down to whatever, like 30 some dollars. Um, it's a puffy. It keeps you warm, enough said. You guys can laugh all they want, especially after my foot issues last year. Crocs come with me. Um, water crossings on the way in. I don't want to get my boots soaking wet right off the get-go. I will strip down, take the time to put on Crocs. These are actually Walmart brand. They're like $7. They weigh half as much as Crocs. Um, they're like five ounces each. Let's kind of try to stay with clothing. Um, I might look into some more advanced gators. These are 15 years old, Gander Mountain, whatever, Tech H2O gators. They do the job, they keep, keep your ankles dry in the morning with all of the dew. Um, Midway USA, Merino Bottoms, um, those are on sale right now. I think they were 40 bucks. Darn Tough Socks, Smart Wool Boxers, um, this is a lightweight, I think it's the 118 uh, Kuyu, I don't know if I'm even saying that right, I'm not a, I'm not a name brand fanboy, I'm, I'm just not, I got it from a guy I used on, I think, Rock Slide Forum or something like that, I think I paid $20 for it, they're like 80 bucks new. Lightweight. Merino is absolutely awesome. I will never go with anything else for a base layer. Um, there's my other name brand piece of year. It's a Sitka beanie. There's nothing special about it other than it's the lightest beanie I own. Now we're talking high dollars. This is like a dollar Balclava, however you say it, from Walmart, Remington brand. It's enough to keep the wind off and take the chill off. Just a no-name piece of whatever for gloves. And aside from that, um, packable rain gear. I said that I ditched the Gore-Tex. This stuff is awesome. Um, it's very similar to Cabela's Space Rain. You take a look at it. It's very light, okay? It's not made for going through the brush stuff like that, you will tear it. Um, but if you just need to stay dry for an hour long shower and you're not gonna move very much, they work well. 
Midway USA. These are on sale right now. Today is August 1st. They are on clearance. I think the pants were $21 and the jacket was $24. Um, these literally saved me two and a half pounds of weight over the Gore-Tex set. I've used them before. Um, they do not wet out like frog togs eventually do. These keep you dry. They're not very breathable, um, but it does what it needs to do and it keeps you dry on the outside. There's nothing good for real high exertion keeping you dry or keeping you to prevent from sweating. Um, again, my Nyla Plume bags that I love so much. Um, here's one of the, the bags that I use. Um, if it doesn't have to be 100% waterproof, I'll throw it into this specific bag because this one, I actually took a 20 ounce soda bottle, um, cut it down, put the cap on it, actually punched a hole through the bag, put a cap onto it, and made this hole just the right size to slip over the fill valve on my sleeping pad. If you guys don't know, you can really kind of wreck the temp rating on your, your inflatable sleeping pad by blowing a bunch of moisture into it. Maybe not a big deal to some guys, to other guys, they're, they're anal about it. Um, these bags work awesome. Shake them, it's, what do they call it? The schnozzle pump sack. Um, this bag, about four puffs will fill my pad. And these, like I said, these things are tough. Oh, finally broke one. Great, did it on video for you. Um, but that's, it takes a lot to blow a hole in that thing. <coughs> um, I keep those all over the place. So this year, we might be going back into a real hellacious place to chase these elk. And we're gonna go early season, Colorado, right when the season opens. Who knows what the temperature is gonna be. Our biggest concern is we're going back on foot and we're worried about getting meat out before it spoils. So what our goal is, is shoot an animal, hopefully get it hung, partially cooled that night. But if we run into a pinch, I'm gonna bring enough of these tough Nyla flumes that we can throw meat into our game bags. And I know what you're gonna say about plastic and meat, but I will assure you that if you throw that bag of meat into a moving stream of water that's 40 degrees, it's cooling that meat faster than any amount of airflow is if that air is 85 degrees outside. So that's kind of what our goal is. So I'm gonna pack like four or five of these things and hopefully we'll get lucky enough to give you an update on that. Um, pillows, more of them, like I said. I actually took and taped the two together to go underneath my mattress pad or a sleeping pad, kind of cradles my head in the center. They are not, there's nothing fancy about them. It's literally a straw that goes into it and that's how you fill them. And you don't actually over inflate them. They're, yeah, it works for me and they're lightweight. Um, mountain gold, everybody knows about that. Make sure you pack enough. My cook kit this year, you saw last year's, this is this year's cook kit. Um, Jet Boil Sumo top. It has the little stand built into it for your um, fuel canister if you're gonna use it. A long spoon that goes into the mountain house package. Same thing, burners inside, another fuel canister. I only put the sack on the inside to keep it from rattling around. Um, again, pre-filter some water if I need to. Otherwise, I guess in that case, it is just dead weight. But I saw the efficiency of it last year, and I would say I probably burned twice as much fuel on my little one. So we're going two guys 10 days with two of these little cans. There's no way that little stove would get by on that, that amount of fuel. So it's kind of worth it to to have the heavier jet boil in that case. Um, we did do campfires last year, each night. That's the only real reason for the saw. Um, 
we're not cutting skull caps in the mountains and we know how to pop a, a skull off of the spine with just a knife so this may or may not go ten dollars or ten ounces for it um, another pillow Here's another option for you guys that need waterproof bags. I know we've all tried keeping something dry with a garbage bag and it doesn't work. These are trash compactor bags. You can get them at grocery store, Walmart, whatever. They're a lot tougher than a trash bag. Um, they're, they're about the same thickness. They're a pretty good size. And you can put almost everything in your pack into something like that. Um, a lot of them are scented though, so you gotta kinda watch that. But, Cheaper alternative to the Nyla Flume. Um, more Nyla Flume. Um, bear bags. Uh, we're not in grizzly country, so we're not taking all, all of the precautions, but this is a waterproof military laundry bag. We used it last year, works great. Holds a lot of food, but I will tell you that is not enough for four guys for 10 days. Um, we just ball it up at the top tie what's called a lark's head knot around it it's just kind of a compression knot and then it gets thrown over a limb and pulled up that will probably be replaced this year with a lighter weight dry bag um, another item that came with last year and is not coming this year i was convinced i was going to shoot an elk and i wasn't going to have anybody to take my picture with my trophy so i bought this little camera stand thing for the phone it's not super heavy and it's kind of nice you can wrap it around branches or whatever holds your phone does the job but i will bring this the remote it syncs with bluetooth and it is a remote uh whatever you want to call it shutter activator for your phone prop your phone in a tree if you really want that picture this thing is like half an ounce um, it works fine works for Android and for Apple phones. Um, one other thing, the group I hunt with, we do not all have the Garmin inreaches, uh, so it is just no good for one of us to have it without everybody else. We communicate old school. Somebody isn't going to come back to camp, we take a note, write it down, slap it on the door of somebody's tent marker and notepad the least you can do to try to keep some guys in touch with each other during the day um, if your guys come back to camp a couple of last items and this with the exception of food and a cat combat tourniquet that is on order and some packable gauze this is everything that's going up the hill with me this year. Um, I actually, after doing the hunt last year, spending a little bit of money this year, not ridiculous except for a tent, um, I actually cut 11 pounds out of my pack of excess stuff. Um, we'll start with this bag, mainly a kill kit bag here. It gets packaged up a little nicer. Um, this stuff is called Zing It or Lash It. It is like a tenth of the weight of paracord. Um, 50 feet of paracord weighs like four ounces. Um, this isn't all of it, but I take this stuff instead. Smaller diama, diameter, Dyneema. It's rated for 600 pounds and it does hold it. Um, I can pack 360 feet of this and it only weighs six ounces. Um, guys don't realize how much rope you use. You hang a food bag 20 feet up in the air, it's at least 40 feet of rope. Now if you're going to do that with meat, then you've got five bags. That's 200 feet of rope to hang those bags, if you're actually going to bear proof it. Um, so you'll definitely underestimate how much rope you can go through. That's why I go with something light and it's strong. Um, it's easier to clean up after shooting an animal with gloves. We do gutless method, so it's not real messy. Um, I do pack two pulleys with me. 
Um, one of them is specifically for the bear bag, just because that is up and down at least twice a day. Um, just saves on the branch. We throw this over on one rope, feed our pull rope through it, and the bag goes up and down nice and smooth. I do bring one other one in case I run into a scenario where I need it when it comes to hanging meat. If you guys don't know it, carabiners work fairly well kind of as a slide sliding surface for pulleys or as a pulley um, for hanging purposes too. So carabiners don't weigh much. Uh, last year I packed a Havilon knife. Um, it's okay. I don't care. The blades dull very fast and I don't care for changing blades while my hands are full of blood, fat, uh, grease, you name it. It's too easy to slip and cut yourself with that. I actually will be getting a different knife, probably a Rat 2, something with a, a hard steel blade that's gonna make it through a whole animal. But last year, literally, I I was the one that, that took hide duty, so I peeled all the hide on an elk with this $10 Walmart Guidesman knife. Um, it was razor sharp to begin with. It still cut fairly decent by the time I peeled everything. And then I switched over to the Havilon for quartering and deboning. Um, but hoping to shave a little bit more weight. It's only like three ounces. That's all the wrap two ways. So I'm gonna shoot for that and see what happens. Um, kill kit, these are cheap, I think Allen brand game bags. They're like eight ounces, I think, for five bags. Um, I'm probably gonna go with the, the plastic, whatever you call them, the nylon, like tag bombs or caribou this year. Uh, so that is one upgrade I'm gonna do there. Another thing, I talked earlier about the uh, polyacro uh, plastic. Um, had somebody else recommend it to me to save, not necessarily weight, but again, dual purpose something. This is one of those 99 cent emergency ponchos. I took it out, I measured it. If you take this poncho and lay it out, it is six feet by eight feet. It's even lighter than the polyacro. This isn't a work surface. It's just to keep the meat out of the dirt and stuff like that. And in a pinch, I don't know, if you have just a horrible storm, we all know these things are 100% waterproof. If I had to hunker down and my rain gear is soaked, another thing that would multi-purpose for me. Um, the first aid, I, I had mentioned that I don't have my cat tourniquet yet that's coming. So butt wipes, um, and tagging along with wipes. One of my kids got these for me last year for Christmas. They are a cotton washcloth that is dried out and compressed down to almost nothing. Um, they weigh a tenth of an ounce. And when you, it's like the little dinosaur capsules we all had as kids. You throw that into water and it's actually a good sized washcloth and it's plenty, plenty durable to wash your whole body with at least once, twice if you want more. Um, I'm gonna pack those things. That saved me a three ounce washcloth. Um, the other thing that works for that too, guys, is just quality wipe. Uh, there's dude rags or dude scrubs, something like that out there. Get yourself a, a wipe that works for your keeping, keeping your junk clean daily, um, but it also doubles as a washcloth when you add a little soap to it. I brought all that different soap and crap last year. This year, in fact, I need to get a smaller bottle. This year I'm going with two ounces of a product called Camp Suds. Um, it washes everything, dishes, hair, pits, crack, you name it. Um, Gold Bron Friction, that helps with chafing. I actually got it right here on the sides of my hips, um, just from the unevenness of the pack, kind of jiggling and bouncing around. Um, foot powder, um, crotch powder, gold bond powder there. Miscellaneous first aid stuff. I guess I wouldn't even call it first aid, but Imodium and ibuprofen, some painkillers. Um, I'm a soda junkie, and I knew I wasn't packing soda up. So caffeine pills, floss, and a mini toothbrush, um, powdered toothpaste. Again, saves that two ounces of a toothpaste tube. Um, multivitamins. Uh, one of these also has an altitude sickness medication in there. 
the first time I went to Colorado 20 years ago, I actually got pretty sick. Um, and this last year I looked into this prescription altitude medication. You have to get it from your doctor, but I can't say for a hundred percent that I wouldn't have gotten sick, but I was at 11,000 feet. And I mean, we parked the truck, hiked up the hill. There was no getting acclimated, nothing like that. And I live in Wisconsin where it's 600 feet. Um, insurance actually covered it. Something to look into. You have to look up the name. I forget what it's called. Nail clippers, kind of an extra, but uh, chapstick. Alarm clock, I can't wake up to my cell phone alarm to save my life. Um, I'm a smoker. The doctor always tells me I have asthma. I said, what the heck, I'll take an inhaler. This is like excellent for hiking. I'm not a doctor, whatever, but let me tell you, you catch your wind a whole lot faster if you've had a huff of albuterol or whatever. Um, this is the true first aid kit. Nothing fancy. There is some quick clot packing gauze in there, some Luco tape, antibiotic, various gauze pads and bandages. Um, probably the most important thing in there is mole skin in case you get blisters. And this is the Uppo bag. GPS, um, nice, well, used to be nice, I guess, uh, Garmin 600. Um, last year I went to using Base Maps Pro on my iPhone and I tried to give it a fair shake, phone, GPS. I got so sick of this GPS. Um, the interface on a phone is so much easier. It's so quick to type in a, a, a waypoint, you name it. This only serves one purpose for me, and that's it's fairly rugged. It's 100% waterproof. I got two more AA batteries in here as spares if I need them. This is going to get turned on, mark where the truck is, mark where base camp is, and then it's getting shut off and thrown in the bottom of the pack for the rest of the week. Um, I just don't have use for it. Um, everything that does, my cell phone does better. Um, Tack Bivy, it's kind of like a Mylar blanket, but it's a sleeping bag style. Keep that just because you never know. Um, backup release if you're an archer. Figure out what you need if you're a rifle hunter. The Uh-Oh kit. Um, here's some 300-pound um, Spectra Dyneema fishing line. Works for a lot of things in a pinch. Six cable ties. Um, paracord spare boot lace that um, this zing it cord it would work for a boot lace but I know that the knot is going to loosen up and uh, come come undone on you this is stuff called stego tape waterproof it'll stick to anything wet tent repair uh, you wrap enough of it it'll repair the belt on your pack if you need it to at least um, Spare lighter. Um, lighter is wrapped with some black duct tape. Fire starter, emergency fire starter. Starter. These are cotton makeup pads, makeup remover pads for women. And top is nice fluffy cotton. And then the bottom I dip into melted paraffin wax. This will burn for about three minutes. Well, it doesn't matter how wet it is. You may not light this part if it's wet, but you'll light this side. It'll burn just like a candle. I do these over the Vaseline cotton balls because these aren't messy and they're not scented in any way. Um, and then a compass, the most basic form of getting yourself out of the woods and electrical tape wrapped on it. Um, another thing I just wanted to hit quick, that little knife, folding knife, weighs about three ounces, okay? There's actually a lot of metal there. This is a Moriconiv fixed blade. It's a companion knife. Um, even with the plastic sheath, it does not weigh much more than that. Um, and we're starting to get pretty dark, and I'm way long-winded on this. This will end up being a YouTube video. But guys, that's what my gear setup is. Um, oh, two things, I, a couple things I forgot still. Um, I'm not going to pull it out. Stuff Sack UGQ Bandit uh, Zero Degree Quilt with Overstuff. This was actually a present from my mother last year when my dryer ate my uh, sleeping bag at the last minute. Thank you, Mom. That thing is awesome. 
anybody who's worried about drafts in a quilt, they've never tried it. I have no problems. Um, upgrade this here, Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL2, two person tent. Um, spec on it is two pounds, 10 ounces. It is just the right size. I Now I can see why everybody recommends this tent. Um, this is a $450 tent to buy a brand new 2020 version. I actually picked this one up. If anybody's interested, I'll share his name privately. Uh, it's a guy that's trying to get into online sales. This is a 2019 version, little different vestibule design on it. It's 300 bucks. And he sees these somewhat regularly. Uh, last year I used the Lux uh, Hex Peak XL three person TP. Phenomenal. This is 29 square feet, just the right size. That TP is 81 square feet. It's great for two guys. Um, it's just overkill for what I needed. It was five and a half pounds. I cut two and a half pounds here and I have uses for this other than just hunting. Um, sleeping pad. Last year I used Big Agnes Q Core Deluxe insulated. Super comfortable, four and a half inches thick, but it weighs like 43 ounces. Um, this is another thing I came across. This is the super light version of that same uh, Big Agnes pad. Comes in at 20 ounces. It's not, you know, you can get the uh, Nemo Tensor, I think it's 15 ounces. But this REI had on clearance. This is last year's model. They changed the fill valve on it. It used to be $127. They clearanced them out for 50 bucks. I got one for myself and for all of my boys um, for camping. If I know there's a bunch of rain in the forecast, this is a 10 by 10 sill, sill nylon uh, tarp. It's also the same tarp I use when I go hammock camping. Um, if I know we're gonna have a ton of rain, and we don't wanna cook in the cook in the rain, sit around, socialize in the rain. We actually brought this last year, ended up not raining, of course. So you want no rain, bring a tarp with you. Uh, it's 24 ounces, dirt cheap, uh, board paracord is where I got it from. This is probably seen 80 nights of use. It was $17 for the tarp. Um, you don't have to buy a $400 Kuban fiber to keep you dry. And last thing, I hope you guys can still see it, is water filtration. You guys saw my baggie that, or my bottle that I use. And the reason I, one of the reasons I use that is because the Sawyer Squeeze screws right onto that. I can screw right onto the bottle if I wanted to put dirty water in there, and then I can just suck right out of the bottle. That's not how I run it. I run, everyone's complaint with a Sawyer is that these factory bags, can burst or you fold them enough times they get little pinholes in them. Um, it's nice. I keep it as a one ounce spare. Um, so it does come with me. It's just a backup. I use these C knock bags. Um, this is three liters. So you can screw, filter this way. And do gravity filter, hang it while you're doing something else in camp. Three liters of dirty becomes three liters of clean in about five minutes. Not the fastest thing, but I'm always doing something else while this is filtering. Um, when I leave camp, I just take the dirty bag with me. I leave the clean bag usually for the other guys back at camp. I take the dirty bag with me and I will fill my bottle as needed throughout the day. And then when I filter that, I will refill this with three liters and throw this in my pack. I trust these bags that much that I'll throw them in my pack with my down clothes. Um, the great thing I think about these bags, not only that they, have, they don't need adapters to go to the filter, but over the Sawyer fill bags, when it comes to trying to collect water in a stream or whatever, it sucks to try and fill through that. On the Cnox, the back end opens up. You can get a lot of water in there fast, get it full, close it, 
flip it. And then this little slide, it's locked waterproof. Somebody needs to make a game bag like this so I can submerge my meat in a creek and cool it down. Guys, I think that's about everything. I know I kind of sped up here at the end, but just, I guess, kind of what I've learned here in the last year and a half, two years of collecting gear for it, I was perfectly comfortable on my last trip. We saw 80 degrees during the day, 10, 15 degrees at night. I had the gear I needed. It was just a logical thought process of think about everything. What's, what's it look like when you wake up in the morning? What's the first thing you do? Make sure you got that. You wanna brush your teeth? Make sure you got that. Once you get this list of all the things you wanna do, now start looking, what can I do to combine items, to not carry duplicates, things that can multi-purpose. The last little thing I'm gonna to touch on real quick is what I did for food. Everybody keeps asking, I don't know, it's just what goes into my gut. So real quick, I'm not a big breakfast person. I don't do oatmeal. I don't do anything like that. These Met RX protein bars are like 400 calories and they actually taste really good. Cliff bars are pretty good too. I had some of those along with me. Um, that's breakfast and lunch. I like to snack all day long. A couple of the mini, mini Snickers bars. Um, some guys, Jolly Ranchers make them thirsty. Other guys, it tends to quench their thirst. Your choice, they're light. Um, I don't buy into all this electrolyte replacement stuff, the noon tablets and whatever all of that stuff is called. You start looking at ingredients, vitamins, minerals that it has in there, you will not beat Pedialyte Infant Powdered Drink Mix. The water where you're at tastes like crap. This covers the taste but it also gets you those vitamins, minerals that everybody needs. Um, I usually go through about three of those each day and the rest is however much water I can drink. Um, I actually take Pringles up with me, but I don't bring them in this. Every day I've got like three ounces of Pringles. I smash them up into powder and throw them in a Ziploc baggie and I will either eat right out of the bag or shake them into my mouth or I'll take those and add them into a mountain hounds meal that I eat every night for dinner and the other things I pack would be trail mix peanuts the squeeze packets of peanut butter and my personal favorite of all time spam singles um, and the very last thing that I will do is the moist bacon bits can be added to any meal that you have. It just breaks up the monotony. It tastes amazing with bacon bits. So uh, anticlimactic end to it, but guys, that's the gear. Um, if you got any questions, want to know where I got it, how much I paid for it, why I chose something, um, shoot me a message, drop a comment, however that works. Don't, don't, try to message me on YouTube because I barely know how to post a video there. So, uh, all right, guys, take care. Good luck this fall.